Just to illustrate one more point about Cinema 4D, the difference between a parametric object and a polygon object. Now, parametric objects mean that there are parameters involved with it. There are options that it can be changed. Parameters. Now, a polygon object means that there aren't any more parameters that can be changed. It is just a polygon mesh. Now, just to make it simple, I'm going to go back to the lathe object. I'm going to reduce the amount of subdivisions. And I'm going to go to the spline object. And I'm going to go from 0 degrees in the angle back to 5. So I can reduce the amount of polygons on this model, just for illustration. So right now, there's a lathe object, and then behind, below that, as a child, is the spline profile of this wine glass. Now inside the lathe object, there are options for the angle of the lathe. The amount of subdivisions. Isoparm subdivisions, don't worry about that. The movement, scaling, there's options. There's parameters that could be changed. If I go over here to this button, make editable, I'll convert that from a parametric object into a polygon object. And that means these parameters will go away. Now what I'm losing in parameters, I'll be gaining in polygon modeling tools that I can't use right now in this mode. Now I'll show that by I'll actually command C and command V and I'll make a duplicate of this wine glass. What I'm going to do is I'll uncheck this lathe object and I'll actually click this red light right here and that is a visibility in the editor field. Now if I do that to this one too it disappears. This means it's not visible in the editor. So what I'm going to do is I'll actually select this lathe object and I'll go over here and make it editable. Now you can see, because I'm in point mode right here, I'm able to select the points of this polygon object now. It's not no longer a parametric object. It's a polygon object. And as you can see up here in the object window, this is my parameter. This is my polygon object. And you can see by this icon, it's a polygon. And this is my parametric object right here because there's still a spline and a lathe object that creates it. So I'll just take this. I'll go over here to object mode or model mode, which means I'm able to move and select entire objects instead of the points and the lines of the faces. And I'll move that polygon object over here. So now, right now, as you can see, they're identical objects. But if I go into, if I had this lathe, if I had the polygon version selected, and I go over here to point mode, I've actually got points that I can select and move around. I can move them around, up and down. I can actually, if I select more than one, I can move them out. I can rotate them. I can scale them. I can push points around. Now, I'm still in point mode. I'm just going to go over here and select the lathe object. There's nothing that I can do. I'm still in point mode, and I select the spline object. I can actually still select the points of the spline. And that's just the way that you edit splines. So even though I can't select every point on this model, I can still go in 
and mess around with the spline if I want to. But I can't do that on the polygon version. I've only got these to mess with. If I go into line mode, I can select lines. Point mode, points. Line mode, lines. And then polygon mode. I can select polygons. And I can move them in the same way that I would move points or lines. But since there are four, since there's four sides to this polygon, I can scale it like I would, or I can rotate it if I wanted to. There's a, there's, there are many polygon modeling tools that are available now to this object, now that it's a polygon object. And they can all be found by right-clicking on your selection based on the point line or polygon mode that you're in. Right now I'm in polygon mode. There's a couple of things that are really powerful in polygon mode that, that you can't do in line or point mode. One of them is extrude. Now I'll just select a polygon and I'll right click and you have all these options if you want to do it. I'm going to go into extrude right here. As you can see my icon is the extrude icon. I'm just going to select the polygon. I'm just going to click and drag on it. And as I do that, I'm extruding. I'm creating new polygons as I do it. Every time I click and drag and let, and let go, it's a new set of polygons. That's great. It's very powerful. Now just for fun, I'm going to put a handle on this wine glass. So I'm going to have these. I'm actually going to do just a couple of them. I'm going to do one more from there. I'll do three total. And I'll do it right here. <clears throat> I'll select these poly this polygon, right click again, and do extrude. And just click and drag. Click and drag. Click and, oops. And click and drag. Now see that's what I was what just happened to me was I I used the move tool, which isn't actually an extrude, it just moves the face. So be careful of that. So I've got this weird these two weird extrusions right now. And I want to connect them together to make a handle. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to ex I'm gonna select this polygon and this polygon. And I'll right click again and do extrude. And I'll just click and drag. And they end up being a little bit, they'll end up being kind of close to each other. And that's totally close enough. And now it's important right now because I'm going to be connecting this one with this one. There needs to be, there can't be any faces or polygons inside that connection. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these right here. Now how do we get this part and this part to be one piece? That's one more tool that I like a lot and that's in point mode and it's called the weld tool. Now welding sounds just as like it sounds like we're gonna be combining points together. We're gonna weld them together. So the first one I'm going to do are, are these two points right here. I'm going to select this point and this point. And I'm going to right click. And now you can see this menu is different because I'm in point mode. As opposed to polygon mode, it's a much bigger menu. Now in point mode, it's just this menu. And inside this menu is the weld tool right here. Now when I click that, you can see it draws a line with a point. What that means is it's going to combine these two points and make them right in the middle distance between the two. 
No, what happens if I click that? Boom. It welded those two points together and made one point. And now these two, at least on one side, are connected. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to hit space bar to go to the previous tool, which is my selection tool. Select that point, shift select this point, hit the space bar again to go back to the weld tool, which is my previous tool, and I have this. And there's two options you can do right here too. I can be I can have it be in the middle of the two points, or I can actually go over here and have that other point weld on to the to the position of the other of that first point. So you can either have it, if I select these two points, go back to my weld tool, I can have it go here, in the middle, or on this point. And because of the way that these two faces are, I'm actually going to have this point move on and weld to this side. So I'll click on that point, and it does that. I'll do the same thing for these two. Select that point, select that point, space bar to previous tool and then click that. And there we go. These are actually connected pieces now. Like a little bit weird. What I'm going to do is just take my selection tool, select these two points. It's going to automatically go to my move tool and I'm just going to move this over like that. I'm going to take these points And move them down these points move them down a little bit over I'm just going to kind of push these points around until a handle kind of reveals itself and that's that's a large part of modeling, is really just kind of pushing points around. And as you do that, you just want to put some music on, put a podcast on, a little bit of tuning out, because it's, it's, just a, it's just enough brain power to be able to concentrate on something else. I'm going to do that. One more thing I like to use up here in the select dropdown is the loop selection tool. And that will provide a loop around whatever you want to select. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use though, I'm going to select loop select those points and I'm just going to move that up. I'll move these two points up. I'm just going to push these points around just a little bit. And there we go. We have a little bit of a dainty handle for my wine glass. And it's all one piece. It's all one piece together. The handle comes out of the wine glass, much like it really would in the real world. And that's one way of creating a handle for a wine glass. <laughs> or a coffee cup or whatever you want to handle on there's one more thing you could do and that's that would be to use a spline let's just say a bezier and create an extrusion from that spline that would be a handle so I'm going to do that make the outside of the handle I'm going to go back to the spline tool. I'm going to make the inside of the handle. I'm going to do one, I'm going to do one, th I'm going to do one thing that I haven't shown you yet. Because I, even though I want this spline and this spline to be together, right now they're two separate splines. So what you can do instead is I can select both these splines like that, 
and I can just in here in the objects panel I can just right click and do this right here when I do that it becomes one spline and that's what I want and if I close the spline then I have a complete spline that I can use then to extrude and create a crude handle. Now if I go back and in the extrude and just do that, and then I'll go back to the spline object and I'll go to model mode or object mode, and I'll actually just scale down the spline itself. If you click away and drag, then it won't scale in a certain direction. It'll just scale all the axes proportionally. I am actually going to scale it a little bit this way. I feel like it's just a little bit too long. And I'm just going to go into my move tool and move it to be... <laughs> in the wine glass. Now if you're doing a coffee cup or something something thicker, you know, this could work as a handle and you could just take two separate objects and have them intersect and that would be that would end up rendering to look like the handle is a part of the wine glass or the coffee cup. So there's two ways of doing it. You can extrude a handle or you can use some uh, you know, higher beginner level and intermediate almost level modeling skills to to create a handle as a as a as one piece of everything. So that's a couple. Those are a couple of tricks that I think you'll find useful, and I'll uh, I can't wait to see what you come up with next week. See you then.